Well, it's a football-heavy Monday on the Sportsmax Zone. And action in Trinidad and Tobago's schoolboy season continued in the SSFL Premiership on Saturday with a full slate of matches taking place. But our feature matchup saw the Trinity College East to take on St. Augustine Secondary. We have the highlights. The game was underway. And uh, St. Augustine, they started the game on the front foot. But uh, eventually, the cross ball, and look at Kaju coming in and putting it sweetly into the back of the net. The cross coming uh, from Batiste, and there is Kaju just side footing it into the corner of the net. And he says, hey, 1-0, and that was it. The Trinity is trying to get back into the game, but here is Batiste with a long range shot. Good shot indeed. Pollard was equal to it, diving to his left and pushing it out. Then another long ball looking for Hospitalis. The header uh, was taken, but he was far too deep to trouble goalkeeper Pollard. Maharaj giving that ball away to crawl. Look at the shot. Look at the save. Brilliant. He was diving to his left. Pushed it out with his right hand. Uh, that was Tyrese Henry. Then the free kick going over the bar from Prince. Didn't trouble the keeper. Then uh, that ball could so easily have gone into the path of Plaza. But Trinity kept, kept pumping, coming forward. And uh, goalkeeper Henry again to the rescue. Sliding tackle and uh, getting there before the striker and getting it out. Here are the full results and the table after this weekend's games. We had East Mukarapo Secondary losing to St. Mary's College. Presentation College 5-0 win over Speyside High. Arima North had a win. Queen's Royal College also with a win. St. Anthony's College beating Pentecostal High 3-1. St. Benedict's College uh, in one of our um, big, big clashes on the weekend, a 3-1 over Fatima College. St. Augustine Secondary, that 1-0 win against Trinity College. And then the Malik Secondary and Naparima College match did not play. Well, with us to talk more about the exciting season so far, our Sportsmax football analyst, Brent Sancho. Brent, what a weekend it was for SSFL in Trinidad and Tobago. And of course, St. Augustine Secondary defeating Trinity. Yeah, good afternoon to everyone, all the viewers uh, from, of course, the various platforms. Certainly an exciting win for St. Augustine at the end, one goal to nil. I'll tell you what, Mariah, I've uh, lived in the Caribbean for quite a number of years. I've never seen so much rainfall in my life uh, leading up to that fixture. Uh, I was very concerned of whether or not the game would be played, uh, would have been played. And of course, uh, with the great uh, draining of that field at Trinity College East Entrance City, uh, and the ground staff that worked tirelessly to make sure that the, game, the match played, uh, the game would offer it. We, we saw an excellent game of end-to-end -end action. Both teams desperate for points, sitting at, at the wrong half of the table. Uh, and eventually, St. Augustine coming out victorious. And I think well-deserved at the end of the day. Uh, all the, albeit, of course, their goalkeeper, Henry, got the man of the match. I think St. Augustine, in the way they apply themselves throughout the 90 minutes plus, uh, would deserve the winners. Yeah, it's such a common uh, discussion when we talk about the schoolboy football here in Jamaica as well, Brent, because Lance and I, before you joined us, we're talking about uh, Jamaica football, schoolboy football, and we were discussing the rains that, of course, you know, would have hampered some aspects of the game. The goalkeeper in particular, um, unable to make the type of save maybe he would have made if it did not rain to that level and the field was not so wet. Yeah, we've had a lot of games postponed uh, throughout the season so far. It has had an impact on the table overall, as you would imagine. Uh, a lot of teams still making up games. Fact is, there was a pivotal clash uh, going on today between St. Anthony's and St. Benedict's. As far as I understand, St. Benedict's were leading two goals to one. Uh, but we've seen a lot of teams having to play make-up games, and, and that now has an impact on the way uh, teams are coming into fixtures. Of course, uh, schoolboy football here in Trinidad Tobago 
is primarily played on Wednesdays and Saturdays. Uh, and now teams are having to do makeup games on Mondays. So you could just imagine the impact it would have on the players as it relates to fatigue uh, and, and the very same heavy grounds uh, as it relates to the types of uh, rainy conditions that they have to play on. Uh, so it has been tiring, but that being said, the Medix College have uh, taken to their task like a, a water and a duck's back. Uh, they've, they've since their tie against Arima North at the start of the season, a game that we covered here on Sports Max. Uh, they've gone on an absolute tier of the, of the league. Uh, they have, the, of course, the return of their star player, Darrell Garcia, a.k.a. Zoom Zoom, uh, coming back from trials in Spain. And he has been the catalyst to, to their rise to the top of the table. Yeah, Darrell getting two goals on the weekend. And Brent, would you say that he has been one of the key differences and the key game changers for St. Benedict's College this season? Oh, no, there's no doubt. Of course, uh, Ochoa would probably stand out there as well. But what you see with St. Benedict's College is that uh, they have very good individual talents within their squad. In fact, they got match winners within their squad. So when games are tight, uh, they're able to grind out results because those uh, guys that we mentioned are able to get them the points required to move up the table. Uh, and uh, they've been very difficult to, to, to handle for most teams. They, they have a strong presence, physical presence within the middle of the park and defensively. And as I said, uh, with the match winners that they have in the squad, they, they, they look like the team to beat this season. Yeah, so. Brent, a quick comment here on, on, on Garcia, because uh, as you said, he had been on trial in Spain, still only 17 years old. Is it surprising that he has returned home to play in the SSFL, given where his trajectory had, had been a year ago? Yeah, we, we, there has been a lot of talk about that, Lance, and, and I'm happy you mentioned it as it relates to these young players. I may even put in Lindell Sween as well as part of that. Last season, we had young Dante Gil Gilbert coming back from uh, his trials to play for Presentation College, and we've seen that sort of situation uh, with these young players. I think the argument is if they don't come back to secondary school play football, where would they play? Uh, obviously, these trials does have its processes uh, and if they don't make it, or if they do make it, there's still a bit of a process before they get into whatever situation they need to go to. Uh, so it's really about these kids trying to get games. Now, does it have an impact as it relates to uh, the, the school regulations and policies? Uh, that's something for the, the organizers to, to, to answer. But uh, we've seen a lot of it. We've seen it. It's, it's not. He's not the, the only player that I've seen uh, that sort of situation transpire. Yeah, and as we look at the standings, Brent, we see where um, the victory over the the weekend uh, propelled them to the top of the table ahead of Fatima um, St. Benedict's and they were able to achieve that without Josiah Ochoa who missed the game via a suspension so three points ahead of Fatima at the moment presentation college with a victory over the weekend as well right in a stalking position as well but how satisfying would it be for St. Benedict's and their coaching staff to have Ochoa out such a key player and get some, uh, such an emphatic victory in a top-of-the-table clash? Well, it shows to the depth that they have. And, and Lance, when we first saw St. Benedict's College, uh, that was against Arima North uh, at, at the Arima Velodrome at the start of the season. Mind you, this is a team that uh, fielded a predominantly U16 team for the opening game against a strong team in Arima North Secondary and was able to come out with a draw. She shows you the depth that this St. Benedict's College team has uh, to uh, their availability. And, and we've seen it throughout because they have mixed and matched their roster for quite some time throughout the season. Last season, if you remember, they beat Fatima College in the opening game uh, of it, the, the equivalent to our charity shield match with a, a, a U16 team as well. So they have a lot of strength and depth throughout this program going all the way down. Uh, and I'm very, very sure as much as Ochoa is a talented clog in their wheel, uh, they have the capable bodies in and around to be able to sustain such a, such a loss. Yeah, and the presentation college victory that kept them three points off the lead, how satisfying and important would that have been for them? Yeah, it, it would be big because they still have a game against the Benedict's College. They would feel with the games that they have in hand, as we mentioned, with some of the games being suspended uh, for various reasons, that they had what they're the ones with a chance to catch the Benedicts. Um, and the presentation college from what we've seen is a team that normally starts to peak at this end of the table, which is the business end of the table. Coach Cooper, uh, of course, uh, a wily veteran and, and has been able to, to get his team focused in and, and, and very much zero in 
when it comes to this sort of running. So I think there are some really key fixtures to come presentation. College certainly would feel that they have a shout at least a tug on St. Benedict's College. And it's not all done for Fatima College. They still have games that they need to play, but they certainly hit the blip. They've lost two games in a row now against St. Anthony's College and then against St. Benedict. So uh, I just think that uh, presentation and St. Benedict's probably are the teams that are looking at this and thinking that uh, it's their time to make a move. Yeah, and we'd have to say that Arima North and QRC, who are fourth and fifth at the moment, but with one game more, have a, have a lot to do. And maybe the top three uh, are the teams that we're looking for the, the Premiership Championship for. Yeah, and you have to give credit to, to those programs, we, in particular Queen's Royal College, Lance, because uh, when we had them on uh, our viewing uh, a couple of weeks back, they were sitting in the wrong half of the table. In fact, they were very cool to the relegation zone. And Coach Kenwin Jones was able to turn things around and have gone on a very hot streak. I would have to also mention St. Mary's College, who was sitting in the relegation zone when uh, young coach Cornell Glenn came to, to the task. And he has done a, a, fab, a fabulous job in also turning things around for them, which we now see them in the top six. Uh, so we've seen some young coaches do very, very well with difficult programs that were struggling and started moving teams up the table. But you're right. And when it comes to the top three, it's very, very difficult to look past St. Benedict's Presentation College and, of course, Fatima College. Yeah, and we are seeing where the midweek matches coming up, uh, Brent, include Fatima against Signal Hill and uh, Presentation taking on St. Mary's College and Queen's Royal College tackling St. Benedict. So those will be key midweek matches as well. Yeah, those will be key midweek matches. Signal Hill has been a, a bag of... Uh, of, of, of mixed uh, situations. Uh, they have young James up front who's uh, leading the league so far in goal scoring. He, he is a threat up front, uh, but they haven't had the consistency as it relates to result, but still a difficult proposition. Uh, and as you rightfully mentioned, Queens Royal College is the red hot team in the league right now. Uh, so that clash against the Benedicts is certainly have a lot of bearing uh, as it relates to the title presentation college. As we mentioned, they're still there and thereabouts. Uh, and they would feel that they can't afford any more slip-ups. If you talk to anyone on the presentation side of things, uh, they felt they could have gotten a better result against Arima North, where they eventually tied that game. But right now, we're in the business end of the, se the, the season. Teams would have played roughly around seven or eight games, which is around the halfway stage. So as you know, in, in sports, and, and you're coming on to this end, it's margins. It's all about those margins. You've got to get those three points, and you have to find ways to win football games. Yeah, and Brent, we here uh, on the Sportsmax Zone will be keeping a very, very close eye. We're hoping to talk to you again really soon. Thank you so much for stopping by, and take care. Thank you very much, guys. Have a great one. Brent Sancho, our Sportsmax football analyst. He works on the SSFL, and most importantly, a former Soka warrior. We're taking a quick break and coming right back. Welcome to SSFL Premiership.